What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jordan and today we're working on the Datsun 280Z. I got a universal spark plug kit that's gonna help us run the wires really cleanly around the motor. So if you wanna see how that works and how you can clean up your engine bay, stick around. Now, before we jump into the project, I'm gonna go over everything that I bought from Amazon. That way you can follow along if you'd like. But I got a Taylor set of wires, really great setup, um, not that expensive. And they also come with 90 degree terminal ends and that's gonna help us with a clean install. So definitely recommend these. But once you get the box and you take everything out, they give you a bunch of wires. Each one of them is a different length. So make sure to pay attention to that. And it also comes with two different styles of terminal ends, depending on what style and what era of car you're running. The Datsun 280Z is gonna use the socket style terminal end. Um, we'll get more into that later. It also came with some grease, which is gonna be helpful. And lastly, I bought some wire strippers and cutters. This is gonna help us remove the insulation from the wires. Really cool uh, tool, definitely gonna be helpful when trying to do a clean install. Now the instructions for the wires say that we should start with the furthest cylinder first, which is cylinder number six, which is the last one here. You're gonna follow that wire to the distributor cap and we're gonna try and measure how much distance we need to make it to the distributor cap. I'm gonna put a diagram on the screen of all the, the firing order of the Datsun 280Z right here. And you can use this diagram to help you figure out where the plugs go and what order they need to be in because if you mess up where the plugs go, the car is not gonna run right. Go ahead and grab your longest wire from your kit and now we're gonna test fit this to get our length set up. So go ahead and plug it into the sixth cylinder and then I'm just gonna run this across and match it to the distributor. And then we kinda of take a measurement, cut our wire and start putting together the fitting. Now I've got this run really nicely along the engine into my mounts and then let's go around to the distributor and I'll show you what's next. So I just took one of the blank terminal ends and I stuck it in the six cylinder part. I'm literally just gonna hold it here and I'm gonna make a little mark with a marker and this is gonna be the length of our first plug. So I've removed the wire from the engine bay and I've made a couple marks of where we need to cut things. It's kind of hard to see on camera because it's a black wire, but this is the distance of the wire that we need, but we actually need to cut it a little bit further down the line so we can expose the wire that's hidden in the insulation. In practice, I realized that these strippers really are not good enough to do it all alone, just with the vice grips up top. So what I'm having to do is I'm having to use this blade on the back and kind of score the insulation, give myself a good starting point. So take your time. And then once you have that done, it'll come right off. It doesn't always come off super clean. So you might need to clean this part up a little bit, but luckily we have our wire exposed right here. What's a little bit unique about these spark plug wires is that they don't have a metal core like a traditional wire. So once you take this insulation off, it's almost like strings or fabric. So if you remove it and you don't see a metal wire, that's okay. But I actually found that using traditional strippers was a little bit easier for this. So I, I use 20 gauge, kind of just score it and then pull. There you go. So we have a little bit of the plastic left, but that's okay. Basically what you wanna see is you wanna see all these fibers, kind of straighten them out. You don't want it to be frayed. And then what this is gonna happen is that this is going to fold over on the outside of our wire. And then it's gonna go in here so that this contacts the metal terminal. There you go, there's a nice solid connection. And this crimp right here is gonna help push those fibers onto the metal terminal, which is gonna help give us a really good connection. So make sure that those fibers are folded under and this is crimped on. 
Now the next challenging part is getting this rubber boot over the terminal to fit like this. The instructions say you can use some WD-40 on this guy to help it slide in a little better, um, but I think this is gonna be mildly frustrating. So let's give it a shot. All right, so that was admittedly very difficult, but we got it on. Now we can put it back in the car. One wire down, five to go. I'm not gonna bore you guys with watching me do five or six more of these things, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of these wires and be back in a second. And there we go, six wires done, all nice and tidy, zip tied and in their mounts to the distributor. But before we go any further, I'm gonna hop in the car, start it up and make sure that none of what I've done so far has any errors. And so now that we've established that the wires we've just done are all good, we're gonna move on to the next step. So the next step is making a wire for the ignition coil, which is not gonna be much different than the other ones we've already done, but I'm also gonna be repositioning this down further in the engine bay to help clean things up even more. And if you're gonna do the same thing, go ahead and unplug your battery first before messing with the ignition coil. And if you're a 280Z owner with a stock distributor, you need to keep the ballast resistor in the system. I have a different distributor, it's electronic, it's not the traditional kind, um, and so I can take and remove this ballast resistor and be totally fine. So just a quick note, but I'm going to go ahead and take out the ignition coil, polish it up, and get ready to reposition it. All right, so we've moved the ignition coil from right here and we've removed the ballast resistor because I don't need it. We move this down vertically inside the middle of the engine bay. If anybody has any reason why that's unsafe, let me know down below in the comments. You know, I'm always learning, but I don't see any reason why that's unsafe. So we got that repositioned, remounted, it looks great. So now we just need to make a wire that goes from the distributor cap down to the ignition coil and then we're finished guys. All right, ladies and gents, and there it is, the finished job. I think it turned out really, really nice, and let's take a look. And with that job done, we're one step closer to having a clean engine bay and a clean car that's ready for paint. I've always wanted to do the wires in this car, and I think the turnout was really, really awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something, and hopefully this can save you some money. Doing it this way can save you about 60 or $70 versus buying a pre-made kit. And this one also allows you to reposition the ignition coil. So guys, I hope you liked the video, and if you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my